Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Forrest Wynn. He's with the Kentucky State University, a state specialist there for extension in aquaculture. We're going to talk a little bit about ponds and pond management. A pond is kind of like a garden. Uh, it does need care. Is there a certain size that we're looking for to make management a little bit easier? In terms of sport fishing, which is mostly what I work with, ideally speaking, a, a half acre or more would be better. Uh, the the size of a pond as opposed to a lake varies depending on who you ask and in what situation um, and what region of the country you're in. In, in Kentucky, almost all of our ponds are watershed ponds, which uh, mean they, they receive runoff water from the surrounding land, and that's how they're filled. Uh, so in the wet time of the year, of course, there's water that comes through the pond quite regularly, and in dry seasons, you'll, you'll see the ponds down a number of feet often, uh, typically late summer, fall. Can you talk a little bit about what are the fish that we want? We really would like, in most cases, to set up a predator-prey situation between bluegill and largemouth bass. And those two species, the bass will control the, the bluegill. The bluegill spawn uh, rather prolifically and can feed the bass. If we want, we can stock readier sunfish as a supplement and channel catfish, but they are not really part of that predator-prey relationship. Those would just be additional species if you wanted to stock them. Really, we don't want any other species of fish, possibly grass carp in some situations to control various types of vegetation. But really, we only want those four species of fish in our farm ponds. They do best. Uh, that has been proven throughout the years. And those are the species you want to stock. Uh, species such as golden shiner, uh, crappie, either the black or the white, uh, any kind of bullhead or flathead catfish you really don't want in your ponds. A lot of these fish tend to overpopulate and can get away from the predation of bass too easily, uh, and, and you'll wind up with a bunch of small stunted fish that are not, not really desirable to catch. Uh, this is especially true of crappie. Everybody loves crappie in Kentucky, but they're a larger water fish, probably lakes 50, maybe 100 acres and up. You know, I've heard you in presentations before, Forrest, talk about how a lot of our ponds are underfished. The problem is not only are they underfished, but people no longer take fish out of the ponds. And some bass need to be removed uh, from ponds on an annual basis. All the bluegill you catch should be removed because, as I mentioned, bluegill are prolific spawners. And uh, if you don't remove some bass year in, year out, they will uh, eventually stunt. Uh, they'll become overpopulated and the size, average size of the bass will decrease over the years. And I got an email about that yesterday. We see it a lot these days because people like to catch fish, but they're not about big about cleaning them and taking them home <laughs> and, uh, and, and eating them and cooking them and all that. It's just easier to throw the fish back in the pond. The problem is over time, your bass population will shrink to fish on average uh, nine, 10 inches, and those are perfectly viable fish. They will spawn in your pond. They're just a lot smaller than the one to two pound that are more desirable to have in your in your uh, farm ponds. Absolutely. So if you're not fishing on a somewhat regular basis, maybe have some people over, invite some of your exactly. neighbor's kids, because mm -hmm. it is good management. It is. And on the other side, you, you want to control how many people come and fish your pond, because that can get out of hand too. And if all the bass are removed from a small pond, then you'll have a stunted bluegill population, uh, which is also not valuable either where you have a pond full of two or three inch bluegill. I don't see as many stunted bluegill populations as I used to back, let's say, in the early 2000s, 1990s. Now, Forrest, if people are more interested about pond management, is there information somewhere that we can send them to find out more information? Kentucky Fish and Wildlife Resources pretty much got out of the private pond business last year. I found out about this about a year ago. So now when uh, folks call those agent, that agency, they say, call, uh, call the extension service. We are it in terms of unless, you know, somebody talks to a private contractor that basically does this for profit. So we do have some resources out there. Well, that's good to know. They do still have some publications. And, and some of them are quite good. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for watching and have a great day.